Did you think that all radiators were white, boring and horizontal? Well, think again. Here at Plum World, we're going to show you another way to look at radiators. Let's have a look. Radiators everywhere, everyone. Welcome to today's Plum World video. My name is James from the YouTube channel Plumber Parts, and we're gonna have a look at radiators today. So what I want to prove to you in this video is that radiators can enhance the aesthetic, the design of the room. They can be part of the design of the room, but also they can heat up the space properly, efficiently, and adequately, and they can take up less wall space. So if you've got a, a door and then a slight bit of wall next to it and you want it to look cool, you can still get that in there and heat that room up properly. And at the end of this video as well, the last radiator I show you, is not hanging up on this wall at the moment, is so insane, so beautiful, I think I'm gonna hang it in my own living room. And all the radiators that you see here today and the insane one that I'm showing at the end of this video are available on the Plum World website at the time of recording. First thing I just wanna cover is vertical and horizontal. Number one, we've got two vertical radiators here. We've got another beautiful vertical radiator just here. And if we look up here, now we've got what you'd call a horizontal radiator. Horizontal radiator there, there, and there. All different colors and all different size and shape of tube. You can also see that we've got sort of oval tubes here. And then if we look just along here, we've got this flatter, <laughs> I've got my dirty paws on it, flatter panel just on there. Then this round tube here, like so, really big round tube. And then if we go over to horizontal radiators, horizontal radiators make music. You get exactly the same thing. We've got nice rounded, old style type radiator here, that lovely gray anthracite look. I love these, but they are heavy and we'll come to considerations about fitting these in a minute. But you've then got, look, exactly the same thing. We've got that oval flat panel rad, also in white, so that horizontal kind of outlay. And then down here, we've got that flat panel look. These horizontal ones we've got here are single panel. So what we mean by that is it's only got one panel on it. If it was a double panel one, it would be just like this one here. This is a double paneled vertical column designer radiator. All those words put into one descriptive format for you to choose your radiators. Oh yes. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, all these radiators come in a variety of different sizes. And size is directly important when it comes to the amount of heat that they can put out. But also you're trying to get them to fit into the room that you want them to fit into, fit into that space. The great thing about vertical radiators is if you don't have a lot of wall space, especially if you're in like a kitchen and you can buy the accessories that are available on the website to hang your towels off and all that sort of stuff, you can get the BTU output or the heat output that you need to heat that room up just with a small sliver of wall. So don't think that you have to stick with a small standard old convection radiator with the fins on it and the little grill on the top to make it work or you have to have one that's that deep to get the BTU out. You can do that, you can get the BTU out into the size of wall but also you can have it as part of the design. And that's the same, like the widths of these can all come in different size tube widths and the measurements on how to measure them, very simple. It's width, height, and depth. When it comes to horizontal radiators, like these beasts here, some of them, depending on the design, will actually come in a shorter format. On average, they'll come down to about three or 400 mil, but the standard depth you're gonna be looking at fitting is gonna be 500 to 600 mil. And this is the sort of 600 size we've got here. Also, when it comes to widths, I think you will know yet now, guys, generally you'll come down to widths at a square and then longer from there. And believe me, in my time, I have fitted 2,000 long radiators. That's two meters long, double paneled, okay? And that's heavy. And we'll be talking about those considerations in a few minutes time, so don't go away. Okay, so moving over to these radiators here. Now, the one thing that really defines them as towel radiators and the radiator that you fit in your bathroom is the fact that you've got gaps in these rungs that you can stuff a towel in, uh, and you've got multiple gaps like that so you can stuff the towels up there. Again, we've got lots of different types and style. I think the two most common types you're gonna see are gonna be the curved chrome one you've got here and the curved white radiator you've got here. Sometimes when you're thinking about installing bathroom radiators, you've got to think about the amount of BTU, the amount of heat input that you can get out of them. For instance, this one here and this one here, because they're that traditional type round sort of fit on there, they don't have as much surface area to heat the air up around them and give out 
heat into the room. But then again, that's not really their job a lot of the time. Their job is mainly to be a towel radiator, aren't they? You put your wet towels on there, or you when you get out of the bath, the best thing ever, isn't it, is getting a nice, lovely, warm towel that you've just whipped off that beautiful looking designer radiator that fits in with everything else that you've done, and it's lovely and warm and snug. But one thing as a plumber, I would recommend, when you're choosing the size for one of these, buy the BTU, over spec it slightly. In radiator size, buy at least a quarter of what you can get in the room okay also consider if you're on a first floor bathroom that if you've got one of these or one of these in you might want to back up the heat a little bit by putting it in electric underfloor tiled heating which i've actually got in my own suite and it works really really well or if you're on a ground floor you could even put wet underfloor heating in one thing i would like to point out before we move on we've got the little odd one out kind of radiator down here this little baby i actually fitted this exact radiator uh, on my YouTube channel for my mother-in-law. So it had to be the exact right radiator. There wasn't any way I was gonna be able to get this wrong. If I did get it wrong, that's it, I'm out of the will. The one thing I really, really love about these rads, obviously they've got that lovely, what I call sort of Victorian, Edwardian, Georgian sort of look about it. But the great thing you can see here is that we've got really two-in-one radiators. Remember what I said a minute ago about these radiators up here, maybe not being able to give out the adequate amount of heat to heat the room up. This one here, you've got the radiating part here. That's what's gonna heat the room up. Okay, you're probably gonna sling towels on it. I see it all the time. But you've also got this whole rung here that gets hot as well, and you can hang radiators on that, and that's ready for you to whip off and, you know, towel yourself off after a lovely shower or a bath. Now I wanna to talk to you about the material of the radiator, what the radiator is made out of, because it's actually very important, and it could inform your choice about which one you buy. Let's do it. So then, material, really, really important when it comes to how you're gonna fit the radiator on a wall or what wall you're gonna be fitting it to, but also how quickly that radiator heats up and cools down. We call that the heat curve. The heat curve, so they're in a cool way there. So for instance, big steel thick radiators like this, this beast here, will have what we call a slow heat curve. So as we introduce hot water into it, because it's got so much material in there for it to heat up and cool down, it takes longer for it to start really feeling really hot. But also, once the heating's gone off, uh, it also takes a lot longer to cool down. I would probably, if I was working in an old cottage somewhere, or a house where I wasn't, you know, if it was just plasterboard fixings, I would probably look into buying feet for these. You can usually get uh, little stabilizing feet on the bottom of them to take the majority of the weight and then pin them at the top. We've got here an aluminium radiator. Now, the great thing about aluminium radiators is they're incredibly light, but they have what we call a very quick heat curve. Therefore, they get hot really, really quickly and they cool down really, really quickly as well. If you're just putting in maybe a plasterboard wall or something like that, and you wanna put a lighter radiator on the wall, then an aluminium radiator is gonna be the one for you. Things like this, these are steel, these beasts. You know, we're looking at getting on for 40 or 50, maybe even 60 kilos of radiator. So please consider that when you're choosing the radiator that you wanna put in your home. TRVs and radiator valves don't have to be the boring old white plastic jobby, just like those old white horizontal convector radiators. We can update our TRVs to look cool and to look part of the decor and you'll see why in a sec. But firstly, let's go over to like the radiator where I would fit lock shields, and from a plumber's perspective, why? So you're gonna get a bit of niche knowledge here as well. So usually, a radiator valve will go in. Now you've got so many different types. This one here is just a standard right angle one, and it is the most common type you can get. But you will be able to buy this particular one in a straight line as well. So if you've got pipes coming straight out of the floor, that will go in like that. I think that's like that in my ensuite, and I'm going to be fitting one uh, in my bathroom as well. But you can also have them, if you wanted to, you can twist them out like that, so they go straight back into the wall, or you can even buy right angle type ones. On most towel radiators, you are not going to be fitting a TRV, purely because every time you want the heating on, if you've got towels on these, you want that radiator to come on every time so they get hot and they dry your towels out, even sometimes in the summer. And I'll be coming to a little trick that we use in the industry to make that happen using our friend electricity. You never thought water and electricity would go together, did you? We're well, gonna find out in a few minutes how we can do that to heat up one of these beasts in the summer when all the heating's off. Going back to these, we've got standard valves here, elbow beasts like that, straights, loads of different types. As you can see, they're in chrome, but you will also be able to buy the exact same type of valve 
in different decals as well. Grey anthracite, white, and all that stuff. So I bet you thought most TRVs were just the white plastic ones that you twiddle up and twiddle down with the lovely numbers on it. Well, it doesn't have to be like that anymore. We've got, look, different types of colors of radiator here. Why can't we get the same in TRVs? Well, we can. And I've got a beautiful looking one here. As you can see, we've got the gray TRV body on like so. Standard radiator insert going to a 15 millimeter pipe. And then we've got the TRV head that goes on here and screws on that. TRVs effectively work by measuring the air temperature in the room. If the air temperature comes up, there's either a little wax jacket in here or a little spring, and that spring will expand or that wax jacket will expand and it will push down on this valve here and turn the heating off. They're brilliant for saving you money. Pretty much every home in the UK now has got one. You're gonna see these everywhere. But just, I just wanted to show you, I wanted to sort of demonstrate to you that if we put one of those white plastic TRVs on this radiator, on that one, on that one, on that one. It's not gonna look great, is it? We want to make sure that we can get the decal that goes with the radiator and keeps that aesthetic look that we've already achieved by buying such a beautiful product in the first place. How cool is that? How beautiful does that look? That lovely gold writing on there. And finally, I'm about to show you my favorite radiator valve of the whole video so far. It's a beauty and it's gonna go so nicely with, you know what, it's probably gonna go really nicely with this one again. Look at this baby. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful valve. This is just an on-off tap valve. If you had a bathroom with those beautiful old tap heads on them, you know, that would look really, really great with it. And it would look fantastic with this radiator here. And just look at that, look at it set on there at the moment, beautiful. You can even have it like that if you wanted coming directly out of the wall and that would look absolutely beautiful. So you might be saying now, James, you've got all these lovely radiators behind you. Why have you got all these yellow stickers on them? Well, it's uh, quite simple. They've got an inlet and an outlet on them. And this is fairly important for horizontal radiators, fairly important, but it's very important for vertical radiators. Every vertical radiator, or pretty much everyone I've come across in my life as a plumber, and that's been many years of hard graft, has a special flap in the bottom of the radiator itself that diverts heat fully round the whole radiator. So come down here and have a look. So we've got the inlet and the outlet. Sometimes the flap has to actually be installed when you're putting the radiator in. So make sure that you know about that. You, sometimes it'll be just a small little metal cap on a spring and that will just pop in the end like that. So make sure you've got that. You'll know if it's not been installed properly because hot water, when the heating is on, will just shoot across the bottom and then go out the outlet and most of the radiator will either take ages to heat up or not even heat up at all. So what we try and do, we put a cap in and we say, right, we want the heat to go all the way up here first, up these two, and then across and then trickle back down. And that ensures then that we get even heating up over the whole column radiator. And that will go for this one here, this one here, and also this one here. One of these can be installed. And if you just look at this for a start, I just want you to sort of look at the decor of it as well, because I think that's really important. We've got an electric element here, much like what you'd get in an immersion heater, but we can change the temperature up and down just easily as if we're using a normal radiator valve or a TRV, which I think is really cool. But the great thing about this is on this radiator here, for example, we could insert this in the bottom, just like so, we just screw it in. And then we've got this big heating element all the way going up through that first rod because we can have radiators that are heated solely off the electric element without any connections to the heating system at all, but we can have dual fuel. Before we move on to dual fuel, I just wanna show as well, I think almost every radiator that we've got here today, apart from the old one at the end, will be able to have one of these installed. And what tends to happen, say we had this installed at the bottom of this radiator here. Oh yeah, and by the way, you're probably gonna recognize you can get different lengths, okay? of element. What happens is, is this heats the water up and obviously naturally heat rises and it heats the whole radiator up over time. Let's look at something really, really cool. And this works brilliantly for someone who wants their towel radiator to be on in the summer when their heating system is off and their towel radiator is connected to the heating system. Let's have a look. Okay, so back in the towel radiator section. So we can have a dual fuel towel radiator. Why would you want a dual fuel towel radiator? Well, what if you wanted that towel radiator to come on in the summertime when the rest of the heating system is off? So what you do is you have a T-piece like this, you take this bung off, and that bung will then have a radiator valve that goes into it, and hot water from the heating system would go into that. But we can also slide this on, and then we pop this 
into our radiator and now look, we've got our heating element and this one's a snazzy beast, a Terma one that also works on Bluetooth so you can run it off your phone as well. I've actually got one of these in my office because I don't have a full heating system in there. So I just put a couple of nice radiators in with some of these installed. Uh, obviously not with that bit because it's not a wet system. So that is dual fuel. So you've got that option there, dual fuel. Okay, so what I wanted to do within this video is bring you to my own home actually. Uh, I'm in my kitchen at the moment. Now I had a problem in this kitchen. When we installed everything in here, we put wet underfloor heating in. Now we've got three external walls. We've also got an external roof as well. And obviously as you can see behind me, we've got a lot of bifold doors as well. Fantastic in the summertime but the heat loss in the winter is quite high. We didn't have a radiator in here and also if you look around this room you'll see that we don't have a lot of wall space as well. Now the problems I was finding was that I spoke about heat curve earlier on in the video and what I was finding was that the underfloor heating has got an incredibly low heat curve. Say the temperature dropped outside really quickly it would take quite a long time for the underfloor heating to pick that up and get the heating going again. Also I wanted somewhere to dry towels out as well in the kitchen so what I did was I said right the only place I can fit a radiator is on this wall over here. Then I went on and used a standard BTU calculator. If you typed in BTU calculator into Google, you would find one of these. I put the dimensions of the room in, that's width, length, and height. I also said how many external walls there are, three, the square meterage of windows and what the material was that the windows were made out of. Effectively, after five minutes of research, I found out that the BTU requirement I had was 5,791, I believe. So I measured this space, went on Plum World and looked at the radiators. I thought, actually, I really want a nice looking rad, uh, a kind of gray rad to go with the worktops and everything in the kitchen, and also my lovely fridge that I've got as well um, and I found the information out there on Plum World's website I went to the specification and guess what this radiator gives out over 6,000 BTU I also just want to point out as well is that if you're gonna buy one of these rads you can get accessories for them here so I've got a little accessory piece that you can get just here like that and you can hang bits and bobs like towels or whatever on it as well. I just wanted to show you that you can very easily get something that's gonna look great, but also solve a problem for you. Obviously, if the room that you're working in or the room that you're trying to get a BTU calculation for is within the house, it's got no external walls or maybe just one external wall and a very small window, guess what? Your BTU calculation is gonna be different. But as you can see from this video so far, there's loads of different designs of radiator, loads of different size. It's always gonna be able to solve a problem that you're trying to work with. So look at this beast here. Um, just an amazing radiator, showing that not only can a radiator look great, I mean, we've said that radiators can complement the aesthetic that's in a room, but a radiator like this is actually making a statement within that room, isn't it? This could be a towel rail. Imagine hanging a robe off here or rolling up your towels and putting them in each one of these little hexagonal bits. Uh, or it could be, I mean, I'm gonna fit this in my living room, I think. This is gonna go directly opposite the front door. It's gonna be the first thing people see. It's gonna be a great statement, especially when I've probably got a couple of rolled up socks on there staying warm or something like that. But what an amazing radiator. I wanted to show you this last, purely because, it, I mean, look at it, it stands out in front of all the rest of them, which is why I hung it up in front of you. But also, it kind of boils down what I'm trying to say to you, that radiators don't have to be something that just hangs on the wall and has to do a job. They can either complement the aesthetic of a room, like I said, but they could even go a bit further and become a centerpiece of the room and really drive forward uh, a little bit more of a message about something that maybe you're trying to do with the decor in that space. So always think about that next time you're buying a radiator or you're doing a job on a room, maybe think, wow, what can I do when it comes to design and the heating of that room? So I hope you've enjoyed the video today, everyone. Please hit the subscribe button, please like this video, and also comment below, what do you think about this? Would you fit this in your house? Which one is your favorite radiator? It's gotta be that one, isn't it? It's just gotta be this one. And come back next time to watch more information from Plum World. My name's James from the YouTube channel Plumber Parts. Thanks ever so much for watching and see you soon. I feel like a very Buddhist baby out of place, don't I?